Namaste, and welcome to the 30th episode of Hula Du Narpadu. I think this is the longest series I've done, at least as far as number of episodes. I try to keep them short so that they're easy to watch and understand. But today, uh, this verse is going to complete the thought that began in the last two verses. So if you haven't already seen those, go back and take a look at them. I'll put the links up here before you hear this verse. Therefore, when the mind reaches the heart by inwardly scrutinizing, who am I in the above manner? And when the ego or mind, which rises in the form, I am the body, dies, the one existence consciousness appears spontaneously as I, I. Although it seemingly appears anew, it is not the arising I or ego. It is the whole reality, Purna Vastu, the reality which is self. So this, as in many of these verses, is talking about the ultimate stage of self-realization, realization of self. And when we say self, we're not talking about the ego. The ego is something which arises and therefore it also passes away. Death is the ultimate passing away of the ego. But actually the ego arises and passes away many times a second. And if you go back and look at some of our videos in the past about Paticca Samuppada and the, uh, also the root sequence, Mula Parayaya, then you'll understand that the creation and destruction of the ego is simply a thought. That thought is based on the idea, I am the body. So if we attend to that thought, if we devote our attention and meditate on that thought and follow it to its source, then we will reach the real self, pure consciousness, awareness, a subjective self, which is aware of everything and which cannot be distinguished from any other self, because there's only one, <laughs> the self. Now, when the being comes to be reflected in a body and mind, it appears to be an individual. But this is simply this objectless awareness being reflected in a finite body. Actually, awareness has no boundaries. There's only one. Huh? Just like there's a theory kicking around among physicists now that there is only actually one electron. <laughs> and it bounces around space and time and, and makes believe that it's everywhere <laughs> and in everything. It's not too far away, you know, from the truth. The truth is there is one being, the self, Brahman, the absolute. And when we come into this world, it gets reflected in a body and mind and appears to be the ego, but it's not. That's an illusion. So just like when one uh, mistakenly sees a rope to be a snake, when the illusion passes away and he sees, oh, actually it's a rope, that vision of the snake was never real. He was looking at the rope all the time. There never was a snake. It only seemed to be. In other words, it was an illusion. So in the same way, 
this individual self or ego, this mind and body, arise, exist for some time, and then pass away. And how we respond to this determines whether we remain in conditioned existence, temporary existence, uh, suffering, or we get out of it and we attain moksha. So how do we respond when the ego passes away or when the mind or the body pass away? If we struggle to attain another one, we wind up right back in the same fix. We wind up right back in temporary conditioned existence, suffering like anything. It's miserable because our real nature is eternal, unconditioned, objectless, absolute awareness. And when we go away from that, we suffer. Just like if you uh, have to pretend to be somebody else, you know, a fugitive, for example, has to pretend to be someone he's not. It's very stressful. It can't be maintained for very long. Ultimately, they wind up giving up. Huh? Because why? It's just too difficult to live a totally fabricated existence. And in the same way, sooner or later, we get tired of this suffering. We've been going through many, many lives, many, many embodiments, pretending to be something we're really not. We're pretending to be this body and we're exhausting ourselves with tremendous efforts to maintain this illusion. But actually, the self is there all along, just like the rope. Uh -huh. And when the mistaken vision of the snake passes away, the rope is there waiting for us. So in the same way, when this mistaken idea that I am the body, I am the mind, I am an individual, an ego, uh, by the name of so-and-so, and so on, when that passes away, we see what we really are. And our real nature has been waiting all this time underneath. So that's why this uh, conditioned existence is called upadi. Upadi means a limiting adjunct. It means a layer of conditioning, a layer of illusion that is overlaid on the real self, on the real truth. And because of that, oftentimes the spiritual master or teacher or God has to be very severe. He has to be hard. He has to say, you rascal, huh? you're pretending to be this limited, weak, stupid <laughs> person, <laughs> but actually you're the self, unlimited, strong, huh? with infinite power and unlimited knowledge and intelligence. <laughs> so what are you doing? You idiot. <laughs> I used to like uh, the old Mr. Natural comics, you know. He's got this one disciple named Flaky Foont. And Flaky Foont is always playing this game that Mr. Natural, actually, you know everything. And uh, you can tell me the secret of the universe. Huh? And he's always bugging Mr. Natural. And Mr. Natural is always kicking him away. You stupid, you idiot. Why do you want to know that? Uh -huh. And of course, the implied meaning is, don't you want to know who you really are? That's the greatest secret. So, but this universe is actually not a very nice place. Yes, it has its beauty at times. And this uh, serves to help to seduce us 
into thinking that it's worthwhile to be here. And it's not bad, you know, if you remember who you really are. Because it means that you open the door to the unconditioned life, the real self, the true awareness of, of who we really are. So if we're trying to represent this teaching, then we have to be very sober and very uh, acutely aware of the actual situation. And that means sometimes we have to be, uh, or actually most of the time, we have to be uh, not so entertaining. Huh? It's hard. It's tough. I know. I've been through it all, and I can remember a lot of it how you first come in contact with this teaching and it seems so alien. It seems so hard. What? You're telling me that who I think I am is an illusion? That I don't really exist as an individual? This is all bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why this teaching is not so popular. That's why, you know, we only have like 60 or 70 or maybe 100 views on these videos. That's why people aren't recommending them to their friends. <laughs> because it's tough. It goes against the whole illusory struggle to be somebody in this world. And people are looking for advice and encouragement so that they can be somebody and satisfy their desires. But even if they do, uh, it means a tremendous struggle, lots of hard work. And then even if you're successful and you get the object of your desire, it's not gonna be perfect. <laughs> There's gonna be strings attached. You can bet on it. It's not gonna be like your fantasy. And worst of all, it's temporary. It's going to go away. So I'm not going to tell you any of that stuff. Huh? It's nonsense. And anybody who does is a rascal who's just exploiting you. I'm going to be tougher. I'm not going to flatter you. I'm not going to tell you you're, you're beautiful and it's all about love and all this stuff. Because even if it is, the only way you're going to reach that is by some tough self-discipline. Sadhana. Sadhana means giving up these temporary pleasures. Giving up the struggle to be somebody. Just being content with whatever comes of its own accord not struggling to make things better, but being content with how they really are. And going inside and finding the real enjoyment, the real pleasure, the real bliss of self-realization. That's what's really going to make you happy. Not maintaining in this material world, because you can't. It's a lost cause. Everything in this world passes away. So why struggle? Why hold on to it? Why resist the inevitable? Simply a waste of time and energy. So maybe we're not going to be so popular, but we're always going to tell you the truth. And we're always going to speak with integrity. And we're always going to mean what we say and say what we mean and walk the walk as well as talk the talk. That's what you can expect here. And yes, the love is there. Yes, the beauty is there. But we don't just talk about it. We give you the tools to experience it for yourself. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.